Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at which object mapper in .NET is the fastest, most memory efficient and easiest to use and also discuss some of the common mistakes people make when they use a mapper and whether you need one in the first place and spoiler alert, you probably don't. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchampsters.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET 8 application over here, and I'm going to show you the mappers we're going to be benchmarking in this video. So we have AutoMapper, of course, everyone knows it. Then Mapster, which I've made a video in the past, and it's already in version 7, so great progress. Then we have Mapperly, and we have TinyMapper. Now, some of you might be watching this and saying, hey, Nick, you missed Agile Mapper and Express Mapper. And you would be right if the authors of those packages bother building them for release mode, since both of them on NuGet on their full releases are debug mode builds, I'm not going to include them. Now, brief spoiler, even if they were release modes, they wouldn't be equally as fast as what we're going to see in this video. However, that's why I excluded them. You have to at least put the effort in to build it in release mode to get that optimized code out. Now, let me show you what I have in the project. What we're going to be mapping from and to is this DTO. So we have this Spotify album API response object over here with a bunch of things like nested arrays, nested objects, strings, integers, longs, objects, and we want to map that to this model over here. Now, why are we mapping? Well, we're mapping because you might have a DTO for sort of for your database or a DTO for your API contract, and then you might have a domain object or an application object or a model that should be detached from those two objects because those things are versioned and you want to be able to make any changes you want in your domain. So you just have this mapping layer converting from one object to the other, and then you can do all the changes you want in that middle layer without affecting any of the sides which are contracts. At least that is the most common scenario I've seen. Now, have people misused mappers to do other things? Sure, and we're going to talk about that later in the video. But the main idea is you have model A and you have model B. They look similar or almost identical. You can map from one to the other without having to write manual code and say album type this equals album type that in this new object. And then I've generated this test data object with a bunch of stuff in here just to make it more realistic and see some of the most complicated and uh, heavy scenarios that need mapping. So we have everything here. Now let's see what the process of mapping looks like for each of the mappers. So first we have, of course, AutoMapper. Now AutoMapper used to have the static approach of mapping from one object to another, but now everyone is using this iMapper interface that is injected into your classes needing mapping. And then you can define your configurations. You can say that this object or this source object can be mapped to this destination object and vice versa. So we have two way mapping here from one to the other and from the other to one. And then you just say create mapper and you have this auto mapper uh, object you can use to do dot map and map from one to the other. Then tiny mapper goes with a more static approach. So this is how you would define the exact same thing. Then mapster doesn't need any configuration, can just figure it out on its own, which is fantastic. And then mapperly, all you have to do is actually say new mapperly mapper, and that is it. Now, the interesting thing about most mappers is that they're based on reflection or expressions. So they require to do some heavy work during runtime most of the time to make the processing happen and make the mapping happen. So you don't have to write your code. Mapperly has a different approach. It actually source generates mappers based on the models you want to map. So, for example, all I have to define for Mapperly is to say that this is a Mapperly class and then slap a mapper attribute on it. And as long as I have a partial class and a partial method, it will go ahead and generate the implementation for me. So it will go behind the scenes and press F12 to go definition. It's going to make all that for me without me having to write any code, which is an excellent approach. And it's why we have source generators to make things like this happen. Also, if there's a compile time issue with this approach, you're going to get it because the source generator will break your build. You wouldn't know about things like the mappers here unless your application runs or you have tests to validate that and have the tests fail before you even deploy. So it is an excellent approach, in my opinion. And Mapperly has actually become my favorite mapper topping Mapster, which also has a code generation version, 
but as we're gonna see, Mapperly has a trick up its sleeve. Now, two other things I wanna mention is the manual mapping. So you have two forms of it. First, we can have a generated mapper. And in this case, we still used a library. It's more of a Visual Studio plugin, actually. We used mapping generator to generate this. So in Visual Studio, you can actually install a plugin which can see an object and generate all this code using Roslyn in your ID as if it was a normal refactoring. So you can just say, okay, generate a mapper for this to this, and it's going to write the code for you in your ID. So that's what that plugin will spit out. And then at the bottom, I wrote my own mapper and I tried to also make it as efficient as I could. So we have the same logic as before, but we're making the most out of the arrays we have in here and we have for loops and everything just to make sure it's as fast and as memory efficient as it can be. And that is it. Obviously, this is the code you'd have to write before. So you can see that going from all this to something like this is pretty beneficial for the quality of your code base. If you want to go back and make a small change, it can be very, very tricky. And in terms of the mapping itself, auto mapper looks like this, a tiny mapper like this, then mapster like this. And remember, it doesn't need any configuration. So that's all you really need for mapster, which is great in my opinion. Same for Mapperly, all you have to have in place is this class, and that's that. And then we have the generated map using mapping generator and my manual mapping. So what I'm going to do is first just run the benchmark, and we have a memory diagnoser to see the memory impact of that execution. So I'm going to say benchmark runner over here and run the benchmarks release mode and let's see what we get back. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So let's go from the slowest and work our way up. So first we have tiny mapper with 1.5 microseconds and 2.1 kilobytes of memory. It's bad, especially considering that auto mapper that has the same amount of required configuration be a bit more memory efficient, but twice as fast. So super happy with this. Now, everything above this is very interesting because mapping generator, which is that plugin that generated that compile time code is very memory efficient, 1.1 kilobytes compared to almost double that. And it's of course very, very fast, 203 nanoseconds, but it is not as fast as Mapster, which is not compile time generated. I have to say, this is actually very impressive of Mapster, but, Mapperly just wins when it comes to mappers. It is just so incredibly easy to create the mapper. If you want to remember what Mapperly looks like, it's just this. You just have the partial class, partial method, map from what to what, then the mapper attribute, and that is it. And you can have as many methods as you want in here in this Mapperly mapper. So for me, that is my new favorite mapper for what it's doing. And then you have the manual mapper, which I wrote being the fastest by just a little bit. And I think what really makes it the fastest in this case is the lack of methods. So the fact that it's just a sequential method and it doesn't have to jump into any other methods to, to make that processing happen. And even though potentially some of them will be in line from what I understand uh, by the JIT, uh, it is not as fast, but it's equally as memory efficient. So extremely impressive. I think the biggest point you need to keep here is the difference between Mapperly and Mapping Generator, because Mapping Generator has a very interesting value proposition. It's very memory efficient and it's also very fast, but because it is using things like two array, let me just go over here and show you, it has things like this and select statements. It is going to be less memory efficient and slower even with all the performance improvements that Link has. So if you're making something like Mapping Generator, then at least make it efficient and don't use Link. Yes, using Link will make it easier for the developer to write the thing. If you want to be as fast as the fastest thing you can manually write, since it's a machine writing the code, you should just make it write fast code. Now that's all fine, but the real question is, do you even need a mapper in the first place? And as with everything in programming, it really depends. What I need to clarify is what you should not be doing using a mapper. You should not be mocking the mapper in your unit tests. That's a very big one. If you inject an iMapper in your unit tests and you're mocking that mapper, 
you're doing something wrong. You should not do that. Just implement the mapper as it is in your application. And if you say that, oh, I can't do that because then in my mapper, I'm actually injecting an interface that calls it. Like, that's the problem. You're putting logic in your mapper that shouldn't be in your mapper. If you are having business logic, complicated logic, if you're injecting things into your mapper, you're 99% of the time doing something wrong that shouldn't be in your mapper and it should be somewhere else. The mapper has a single job to do. Take object A and use all that information to map it into object B. If you have to make a database call or call a service or do something else to make that other object happen, then that should not be in your mapper. Don't do that. That's why they have a bad rep. Now, if your mapper is sort of view model to model mapping, which is what AutoMapper was originally created to do, then absolutely use a mapper. You can see how much code you can save. And not only that, with source generators, you can have something that is so low overhead or actually no overhead. For in that case, in my opinion, sure, use it. But the moment things start getting complicated and you have the feeling of saying, I should inject something here or use a service or use something, then at that point is where you have to take a step back and say, okay, I'm doing something wrong here. That does not belong in my mapper. In my cases, I'm always between either writing my own mapper or using something like Mapperly, a source generated version that can actually see and it has the guarantees that something like this would have on compile time, which is very important to me. Now I should point out for those wondering that Mapperly does support configuration. So if you want to have after map, before map, factories, sort of customized mapping, you can do that with this version as well. But keep in mind that the further you deviate from the core of the functionality, which is the mapping, the more likely you are to make a mistake. So what's the conclusion? What do I think about all this? Well, if you are to use a mapper, use Mapperly. In my opinion, it is the best and it doesn't really get better than that. However, make sure that you don't put any logic in the mapper that doesn't belong in the mapper. Be very, very careful. But now I want to know from you, are you actively using a mapper and what do you think about it? Have you migrated from a mapper to another one? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me at all, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.